single flood spore can destroy a species. Were it not for the Arbiter's Council, I would have glassed your entire planet. Sir, with respect hey guys, welcome back. It's been quite a while since we last talked about the Flood. In fact, since my last Flood video on March 18th, over 40,000 new people have joined the channel. So to those, welcome. And to everybody else, welcome back. So for the first Flood video in quite a while, I wanted to investigate one of the most quotable and iconic lines of dialogue about the Flood spoken by everybody's favourite shipmaster, and see if this line actually holds any weight, or if it was merely an exaggeration. Can one single flood spore really destroy a species, and if so, how the hell does it manage that? Well, let's investigate. So, the short answer is yes, but no. One single flood spore can't just destroy a species, it can destroy infinite species. I think a lot of people will have assumed that when Artas said what he said, he was merely being hyperbolic and exacerbating the flood threat to strengthen his point. That the elites just well and truly saved humanity's bacon and that their plan to follow truth through the portal to the Ark is the only correct plan. But in fact, in saying what he said, he actually technically undersold the flood's true lethality. Now granted, this is an incredibly nitpicky analysis of a line that got its point across perfectly. What Artas said was still one hell of a stinger and without a doubt had the necessary effect, but out of all the Covenant and ex-Covenant warriors of all the species, Artas was undoubtedly the most experienced when it came to the Flood, Spores specifically. He witnessed a close friend of his, Barrow Kusavai, one of, if not the greatest sword fighter to ever grace the Covenant, die and become infected at the hand of a Flood Spore, so you'd think that his personal attachment to the Spores would make him exacerbate their danger whenever he got the chance, but again, like I already said, he got his point across perfectly, and I don't think changing one word would have all of us and made his point any more convincing. Anyways, that's all potato potato, because at the end of the day, truth was stopped and Earth wasn't infected, so both Hood and Artas got their way. But how exactly do flood spores destroy multiple species, and does it just stop at sentient species? Well, much to your intrigue, or horror, <laughs> no, it does not, and after we've looked at how the infection spreads between species, we're going to look at something that I've wanted to make a video about for quite some time now. How the Flood infect environments. So, spores. How do one of these things that really do just look like sickly versions of alkane dust lead to the downfall of multiple species? Well, it's basically one long chain reaction. The spore infects a single host, creating a combat form, which becomes a vector for the parasite. Combat forms can then spread the infection through pretty much any means of cell transfer. The core foundation of any flood form is the flood supercell. If this thing is transferred into a healthy host through any means, from spores to infection forms to even wounds and biting, the healthy host is now infected. As more hosts are infected and more combat forms are thus created, the rate the infection spreads at is exponentially increased. This continues on and on until enough biomass is gathered to form a proto -grave mind, a central intelligence for the Flood. With this new form of guidance and leadership, they become far more intelligent and deadly. Also around this point in time, some combat forms, if not already destroyed, will be getting quite old and weak. Old age is really going to be hitting them hard. The Flood like to make the most of pretty much everything at their disposal, and so these old deteriorating combat forms aren't just like wasted and thrown away, instead they undergo a spontaneous mutation into a sort of combat carrier form hybrid. Within their back, they begin to incubate infection forms before eventually bursting, just like a regular carrier form, spreading the infection further. Other typically weaker hosts forego becoming combat forms when infected and are simply turned straight into a pure carrier form, which as we all know, do exactly the same thing. 
This goes on and on and on as the floods spread across the planet. The larger their number grows, the more intelligent they become, and the faster they spread. A vicious cycle that is almost impossible to stop once it begins. Hence why the shipmaster glassed half of Africa, despite the only known flood threat being located in Voy. It may have seemed overkill at the time, but he knew full well what had happened if only a single spore survived. So, that's how a single spore can destroy an entire species, but what about multiple species? Well, the answer is a very short and, as you can imagine, a very simple one. As we've said many times before, a spore or an infection form or a combat form genuinely couldn't care less what species you are. If you have a nervous system, you're as open to infection as any other creature, generally speaking. They do tend to go for the easier ones to infect first, but overall, if you have a nervous system, you're as edible as any other creature. And this applies to everything, from elites to brutes to strange birds and and weird foreigner gorilla type things. Anything that has a nervous system is open to infection. However, the flood are also capable of something that could be considered even more horrifying than this. Something that alters not only the inhabitants of a world, but the entire world itself. The infection of environments. So, not only can a single flood spore destroy multiple species, it can also destroy an entire planet's environment and consume its entire ecosystem. And it all starts with flood hives. Because the floods struggle in harsher environments, hence why halo control rooms are always located in snowy tundras, they construct hives fairly early on in their evolution to create a sort of controlled environment with the optimal characteristics to facilitate their growth. They act as sort of pockets for the flood, petri dishes if you will, where no matter the biome that they're constructed in, they can always provide the perfect environment for accelerated growth. However, these individual hives are only temporary. If they want to consume an entire planet, the flood need to begin converting the environments that they don't operate so well in into ones that can facilitate their growth as well as the hives do. They essentially need to convert the entire planet into one massive hive. And the individual hives act as the starting point for the flood's planetary consumption. Within them, specialized flood forms are created with the purpose of harvesting all nutrients from the soil, absorbing solar energy, and also consuming all local native life, ranging from creatures that were somehow left behind by the flood, to fauna and other vegetation. Although, do note, they don't infect plants. Plant combat forms don't exist as far as we know, because they don't have a nervous system. Instead, they're used as simple biomass to create structures and other flood creations, just like damaged or unusable bodies. Like I said before, with the flood, no biomass ever goes to waste. Hopefully that lays the old theory that the grave mind is an infected Venus flytrap to rest. As these specialized forms continue to do their thing, consuming everything in the local environment that can't be consumed through conventional means, these once healthy stretches of land are converted into areas known as blightlands. Dark, dead environments where no plant dare grow and where no animal or insect ever dreams of venturing into. Some marines who observed the edge of a blight land on the Ark gave a real eerie description of it, saying that the only vegetation left that was sticking out of the blackened ground were trees that were hacked off at the head and stunted, and noted the creepy absence of any sound whatsoever. The lack of birds and creatures and insects gave the Blightland a dead, ominous silence. Kind of reminds me of Mordor in a few ways. These Blightlands are the first step in the Flood's process of converting environments to suit their exact needs. They act as the foundation of any future Flood hive, with any life that once existed within them now repurposed as organs and structures to further the spread of the infection, and denote any area in which a sentient being should never set foot in. And all because of one single Flood spore. And so, to bring it back to the top, Artas's iconic line was really only the tip of the floody iceberg. 
one single flood spore can destroy not only an infinite number of sentient species, but can also consume and destroy entire ecosystems, sentient or not. One single spore being left to its own devices can ultimately bring down an entire galaxy, so if anything, the Arbiter was kind of stupid to talk Artas down from glassing the entirety of Earth. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm glad that he didn't, but hindsight is 2020. For all he knew, the wind could have very easily carried a spore up north to Europe, and then humanity really would have been in trouble. At least it all worked out in the end. Kinda. And so, that's all for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this overly analytical nitpick of one of everyone's favourite lines of dialogue. Daily reminder for 343 to bring Artas back in infinite, and also, whilst you're at it, bring the Flood back too. Pretty please. Thank you to Seed of the Tree for the new Primordial Pledge over on Patreon, as well as everyone else who continues to support me over there, and thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next one.